we're getting started before I've even fully got the headset on. Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, the map we're going to be exploring is GM Fever Dreams. And what a fever dream this is. Now, this is a sequel, I believe, to a map that I previously played on the channel titled simply GM Fever Dream. And most notable about it was how it tackled liminal spaces, but with a very unique slant on them, most notably its bright purple color palette. This map has actually been on my list since it came out back in August, but I've been putting it off because I was worried that it would be too similar to its predecessor. However, one look out the window shows that it's continuing with its reputation of doing really new things with what could loosely be called the liminal aesthetic. I mean, look, we're overlooking a beach, all the palm trees, and open ocean. But the purple night sky above casts its glow over the waters, giving it the appearance of a dreamscape. Yeah, maybe you could make an entire map with that premise. But look, where we're starting from, the place we're viewing it from is just as important. We've got our cozy, spacious little room, the nice glow from the lamp over here, and it's like we're waking up and going over to our window, and instead of being terrified at the new reality we find ourselves in, we feel like we might want to just grab a book, bring a pillow down over the floor here, and read beside the window. I can already tell this map has quite an understanding of what creepy and comfy is, and I cannot wait to get going. Here's our bathroom. Look at this! Can you imagine just, like, setting a radio right here and then uh, having a bath underneath this sky? I'm not quite sure where the water would actually be coming from, but hey, it's a dream. Roll with the punches, right? If you can't accept the fantastical, you'll never experience it. Now, let's see what we've got here. A ladder going up. Looking out over the beach from a room like that makes me think this is like some kind of luxury resort. Now we've got another bathroom across the hall. No, maybe even better. Maybe this actually is ours. I would pay any amount of money for a place like this. Look. We've even got a large patio up here. Ah, oh, it's beneath the mountains. It's a little pirate's cove! This is so cool! And even in spite of taking place in some unearthly other realm, and we've still got the familiar sounds of crickets to make us feel at home. And that appears to be our boat docked down there. Uh, so, maybe it's not a dream world that we found ourselves in. I mean, besides the fact that it literally is. For all I know, this works like Neverland. It's a place you can go. Even the attic is cozy. Look, it's got its own outside patio. A bed? <laughs> Imagine when it rains, those heavy winds coming in from out at sea. You just lie there and hear the rain patter a mere two feet above your head. Look, there's even a couch over there, a CRT. This whole place is just built for chillin'. I think it's so cool. Like, I always love it when I see a house where every area is just, like, a different vibe of hangout spot. And so there's a different... Come on, it is... I'm having such a hard time getting through here. That's definitely what this place feels like. Look, we've got the spiral staircase in the middle, uh, which in the absence of a railing, is certainly likely to break a few legs, but I think I'll forgive that for now. Look, we've got the wider area down here, a pool table. Even a serving counter with a huge kitchen, an unnecessarily huge kitchen. And this place's lack of railings is actually starting to be something of a demotivator, but hey, if I can buy something like this, I can surely get some railings installed. I can't see much because of how dirty these windows are. Uh, but it looks like we're finally back at ground level. So let's have a look what's out that balcony. 
and see where we're going. Just amazing. Look at how that's framed. Like, that glow coming from behind the mountain, indicating that perhaps there's maybe something in the sky emitting that light. And just the boat sitting below it, offering an escape anytime I want to leave. You're not trapped here. It's a retreat. Uh, but we may have an opening on the side there. We've got ooh, we've got the glow stick lit staircase going all the way down. Those those lights also fitting the mood. So let's see what's going on out here. Huh. I see. Even in the dream world, we still have to worry about infrastructural concerns. Now this pipe is half exposed. I wonder if there's. Yep. You know what's good at overriding will to explore, though, is knowing that there's a boat down here. Uh, I think these stairs in particular can be forgiven for not being clipped. I imagine the geometry of that would be almost impossible. Oh uh, yeah, this is the life. Yep. <laughs> it's even got its own sounds so for walking on the deck. That's kind of fun. Well, as comfy as the thought of sailing around this in this sounds, we only just got here, so who'd want to leave? There was a large staircase going downward, and I want to see it look. From here, the orange lights in the long windows along the bottom. You can tell. Imagine pulling up here at night and seeing that and knowing you're about to have a real great weekend. Now, let's see what's in that basement. Oh, see, these stairs are clipped. Huh. Now, what's all this about? This feels like the inevitable part of a dream where some negative thought finally slips in and pierces what should be a perfect reality. How howdy. Uh, I can see what looks like a hatch right there and a corresponding one right there. So I guess that's what we're doing next. We literally have to crawl into a dark hole in order to enter this new aspect of the dream. Uh, is the other side of this not textured? All right, there we go. Oh no, I, it's even worse when you're inside. We're not gonna be able to open this. And that's totally dark beyond. <laughs> Okay, we're getting into the real sub-levels now. I mean, as much as I love a basement and a sub-basement, this is starting to take on a slightly different tone. Okay, more than slightly. Oh my, we've got so much cellar space. Imagine how much wine could be stored down here. Oh, we must have it by the barrels. Oh no. There's gonna be so much to this, isn't there? You know that sinking feeling when you realize you're in a space in a game that wants you to get turned around? You guys saw that flicker, right? This is giving me some real Bernard's Door vibes, you know? Like you're having a dream about, like, a vacation house that really does exist until you spot that one door in the basement that's never been there. And when you enter it, you're immediately left in a labyrinth. Some place that you feel like you've always known about. <sighs> A 
Let's have a bit more of a look around before we mess around with that, shall we? I can see the lights beneath there are flickering as well. Do you hear that? There's like very, very faint music. Okay, so this is going to be one of those maps where I just cannot decide where I want to go first, huh? Well, if I do have to start making decisions like this, if it's not going to be linear, then I choose into the vent. Which is something neither I nor my niece have ever said before. Uh. That was weird. Why does putting away my flashlight cause you to disappear? Are you guys a package deal? You... Only work in company? <laughs> Is it the union? If I get rid of one of you, I have to get rid of all of you? Oh. <laughs> well, that was a lot of work for nothing. And this seems like it's been forcibly pulled up. Well, I guess it's somewhat reassuring that when we look up through this gap, we're seeing the same sky. What's less assuring is remembering how deep underground we allegedly are. It's those same guiding beacons. It's as if the world didn't know whether to code this as more tunnel or as part of the beach above. But either way, it's impossible to be led without feeling like you're being led. Almost like they're glow sticks saying, hey, the party's this way. Ah, I see, it's a rave! Oh no, that's... that's lightning. Only moments ago, we were looking out at a clear sea sky. <gasps> Only in that brief flash of lightning can we see the immense scale of the structure we're standing amid. Look at that, there's a- there's a breezeway going over the top. I'm like, addicted to that image of when it is all fully revealed. Like, I can't look away. Oh, and there's a second skyway right here. It's like my brain just craves anything that can give it more information. Even if it has to be drip-fed. It's such a weird sensation, knowing what the place looks like and knowing there's nowhere else to go. Even knowing I could pull out a flashlight at any time. But I just want to see it in that illuminated state that only the lightning can give me. Well, consider my interest peaked with that preview of things to come. I guess we just start... Working through what's before us, right? Ooh. Interesting. It looks like we're going back up. And going back up a fair ways as well. I wonder where this could lead. Wow, yeah, this actually goes pretty high up. Maybe even enough to cancel out how far down we went? <laughs> a 
but we still end up in yet another warehouse. With only one door at its far end, or at least only one that's not painted on. Oh. <laughs> If this is all connected, maybe my spot was just the luxury suite of this resort. Although, you know, it didn't hit me until just now. What's strange about this is that we've got all this hallway, lots of couches. So far, no doors. God, that is so disconcerting. I mean, I just recently played GM Void Places... And its problem was every space of wall was just covered in doors. This one, all this space for only one. I can barely hear that music again. Oh, are you doing me a shining? Yep, you're definitely doing me a shining. And I've got to go through every one of these because I am a horror protagonist. Yep, a thousand percent. And unfortunately, I am most likely going to have to mute that, but... Uh... I'll keep my options open for in case YouTube doesn't give me trouble with it, but I think I've had problems with this particular song before. Yep, any doors back here? Answer, not that I can use. Man, there's just something that's so... I don't know, it's triggering a memory and I can't even place from where. That distant, echoey music playing, the wide open spaces between the tables. It's like I can practically smell the room and feel the hardness of the thin, tightly woven carpet underneath my feet. But the thing is, I just can't think of any situation I would have been in where I would have experienced something like that, and yet I still feel like it's universal. Maybe that's the waiting room before you're born. This took a turn real quick. This storage area barely illuminated by the bright floodlights that fall off so quickly into the back of the room. Floors all dilapidated and mold damaged, like this one area has been forgotten alongside the rest of the place and its pristinity. I don't think pristinity is a word, but you get the idea. And the low rumble of thunder outside. Let's try and figure out where we're going first. Padded cells. That is so creepy. It's like you're out there enjoying the party, and this area acts not as storage, but as your final warning that you're going off the slated path and you're about to see things you're not supposed to. Oh my God. Thank, thank, thanks for getting that for me. Okay, we've now established this map is willing to do scares. Oh my... Huh. You know, after a long while... Oh, nothing. You're not even all going to do it. More than one of you, but not all of you. Okay, well, let's mentally prepare for that, little jack-in-the-box. It's dark inside this one. Yep. Gotta anticipate it. Still jolted me a little bit. That's now I realize even the ceiling is padded. Yep. Well, 
Well, the sound of the rain is much stronger now. We've gotten where we're going. Now let's watch it be illuminated from this angle. Wow, we really did come up much higher than I thought. It didn't feel like it, but here we are. Around and to the right. Oh, wow. In the middle of this catwalk, it is, like, deafening. Is there a Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you see that? My flashlight can't even reach over there, but it looks like there's somebody huge standing in that window. Is that just objects in the room? That's definitely a human shape. Oh my god! Okay, there is actually texture to you. It looks like a guy in, like, a suit, but uh, when we're too far away, it just reflects on the glass. Oh my god. The thing that struck me was not that there was somebody there, but just how huge I could tell they were, even from a distance. Well, my flashlight is not doing very much for me at all in here. But there's just enough highlights in the distance to show just how gigantic this place really is. There's our little crawl space. I don't think we're supposed to be able to be here. I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> gaps of light in a colossal dark space. It always reminds me of that old movie, The Page Master. And I can't quite place why, because it's not really so much anything that happened in the movie, as far as I can remember, as it is just a style that I associate with it. But yeah, I'm definitely going to need some light of my own to make my way down here without falling 50 feet and killing myself. It's like the ceiling is leaking, but the rain doesn't quite reach all the way down. You get the impression that on a different day, or even if we just wait a while, this would be some great deep pool. Then again... I think I may have just found said pool. That window looks out into the open area. Well, what are we using the stairs for? Let's dive in. Yep. Okay, let's check this out. Actually, I'm just realizing... This room is the exact same shape as the one above us. For all I know, these things could just go down infinitely in a spiral. Well, I guess it doesn't. But this one seems to be much better lit, at the very least. And we end up right back over here. Oh look, there's all these beams bracing that metal wall like they tried to keep this locked away from the rest of the place. I have to say, I've really enjoyed the ambiance of listening to the thunder while exploring these places. I don't know what it is, but I think it adds to the dreamlike feeling. Almost like it's some sort of real-world sounds that penetrate your dream as you sleep. Have you ever had that happen, where sounds that are happening in the real world actually influence your dreaming? And you're only able to realize what was happening when you wake up. In this case, it's just kind of a comfy backing track, so it's not likely to wake me up anytime soon. I mean, ditch these, and this room would be pretty comfy. 
Look at this. The stairs going down to the large windows. This is Rain Theater. This is a room for all the people who love to just stare out the window watching the rain and the lightning. <laughs> Actually, from this angle, it almost seems deliberate, doesn't it? How this whole building acts as a canvas for you to anticipate the lightning strikes. I just can't describe what it is that's so mesmerizing about watching lightning illuminate huge objects that take up your entire field of vision. I mean, I'll put it this way. If the doors in the padded cell hallway are like a scary jack-in-the-box, this is like a pleasant jack-in-the-box. You just sit there allowing your tension to build, waiting for something that you know is going to be strangely really nice feeling. And then you get the release, and you go right back to waiting for the next one. Will this lead us out onto the next catwalk? I remember there was... yes, there was another. Is our friend still up there? He is. It's so hard to see, but when all the when all the surfaces you can look through are squares, you really take notice of any deviation. And once more, we're climbing a stairwell. Just wrapping the index cable around my feet like I'm an ATAT. There's no way this is going to open. Nope. Oh no. I think we're going to be heading up to where he is. Suddenly, suddenly I'm dreading the thought of continuing any further. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm bringing up the dream comparisons a lot, but you ever have those dreams where... You just already know, you already have a picture in your head of what's going to happen before it happens. Well, look, I'll tell you that that's where the analogy ends. Uh, because in our case, we have something that we can do about it. Come on, Safety Glock, you and I, we got this. Oh, there's a third layer to this. And suddenly, the thunder and lightning are both a relaxing and foreboding ambiance. We're on the other side of where we've already been. It's the same staircase. Huh. Alright, well, that's a good thing, right? That means... That means we don't have to go up to you. Yeah, just in that brief flash, all I can see is the white of the shirt beneath your tie. Okay, well, that's alright, because we've still got other things to see here. Most notably, that elevator shaft. And I just realized we can take it a level up. Let's go. Yep. A vent over there. And I can see through it the glow from what looks like a projector. Yep. Yep. Huh. Even the glow from a monitor is purple in this world. Oh, and look, it's creating almost like a transparency through the door. Huh. It's like there's a silent meeting going on. 
a meeting of nothing in particular, or nothing I'd be able to understand. See, I have no idea where I am with relation to where that guy was. And I have no idea if I'm just about to round the corner, if I am where he was, but he's now gone. All I know is we're in completely new territory now. Wait, can we can we maybe interact with that radio? You hear that? like this, you are just kind of left in a stunned silence looking around at the empty space around you. Every time that lightning flashes, it illuminates the whole place and you just expect to see that, uh, you expect to see that guy standing in the shadows. Uh, speaking of, I didn't even notice that. Hang on, wait. Picture captured... Uh, May 21st, 2007, 3.25 a.m. Wait, can we get... Can we get a better look? Answer, not really much of a better look. Uh, there's a lot of bloom here, but it looks like there's actually wording on the side. Notes, but I can't read them. Alright, if I, if I get in close, I can sort of read it. Uh, May 14th. Appears every night at 3 a.m. Has a mask of some sort. It usually goes away after some time. Direct confront was not done yet. Oh, May 19th. Weird things are happening in office when he is present. And May 20th, 3.13 a.m. Today he didn't appear, but strange papers were printed out of copy machine by itself. May 21st, today I will try to confront him. That is so vague and on its face doesn't make too much sense. Like what, you're the you're the one worker that's just here well into the morning? And you're just trying to capture evidence without really asking so many of the questions you should be. It's so weird. Have you ever actually had like a dream that gives you just a little inkling of like story or lore? I remember having this one last year where I was with some friends, and we were going to urbex this, like, abandoned, like, Catholic school or something. And I remember we climbed into the basement, and we were looking up this long staircase, and then telling me the story about this nun who fell down the stairs years ago, and she's supposed to haunt the place. Just the smallest little inkling to plant an idea in your head. I can't see him from here. Um, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure which window he was in to begin with. Okay, I think this is gonna be... This is gonna go back to that lobby, yes. Just trying to open doors so I know where I've been. 33B. I feel like I've entered somebody's domain, you know? Like, the actual specifics of something's appearance almost map onto each other. Like, uh, do you appear in a suit and tie because this is an office? Or is this an office because you're a businessman? Like, who molds to who? Actually, that's philosophy for life, but for another time. Well, I found Norton Mapes' workstation. Huh. Entertainment in this place is really something. Okay. Can we... Can we get a look at where you were? You might have actually been up here. 
Actually, that's even worse to think that you are in this bare-bones, under-renovation storage closet. Wait, have we been here before? We couldn't have been. I mean, the room looks the same, but all the doors are closed. No, we entered from what would have been that wall, I think. There's no way we've been to this one before. But no convenient ambient floodlights to guide our way here. It's so weird, the contrast between things that look like they're in some sort of transitional state, being worked on, having things moved around, and the things that are so pristine that look like no one could have ever used them for anything, like the hotel ballroom. Someone smashed through this window. And from up here... Our flashlight doesn't even come close to reaching the bottom. Can we see our man? We, on we only get a moment in that brief flash. And in that flash, I can feel my eyes trying to scan as quickly as possible, taking in everything and nothing, and just leaving me trying to scan that memory for anything I might use. You know what I've just realized? I had completely forgotten that we started this in that vacation house overlooking the bright purple beach. It's like one of those dreams where you just don't recognize any transition that occurs. Oh no, I think this might be it. I know I say that for every space, but I really think this might be it. But of course, there's no one here. Uh. I just keep waiting for the lightning flash. Only now, it's... Now it's anything but a comfy jack-in-the-box. I mean, imagine if the goal of the jack-in-the-box was to find out if something is going to pop out. And it seems we've reached a dead end. God, somehow, making my way through here has been, like, one of the most tense experiences I've had exploring a map in a while. And all of it because I just happened to notice the shape of a shoulder in the glow coming from a window high above me. Plant the idea in my head, and I'll do the rest of the work. That's what horror is all about. Well, it's not a complete dead end. We never went down this staircase here. Uh, but we did open the bottom, and... We're right back onto the spooky room. The one that marked the transition from the liminal to the outright nerve-wracking... If we come back up here, will you still be there? No. No, you are very, very conspicuously absent. And you know, somehow that's worse. It's a real where's the spider moment. Because if you're not there, that means you could be anywhere. And now I just keep feeling nervous that as I use my flashlight to scan the surrounding areas, that I'll catch a glimpse of a white shirt underneath a black tie. All right, back into the elevator shaft. And this is one of those few times where going down seems better than going up. Yep, no, 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 
stop doing all these things to me. Come on. Why won't you open? There we go. And all roads lead right back to here. I suppose all that leaves then is whatever's through this cave, right? And you're also flooded and full of sand. And also guided by the party glow sticks. Oh wow, we're starting to see beams like it's a mine shaft or something. Is that exterior I see? Are those palm trees I see? Are those crickets I hear? Oh look, it's all hidden away in the bushes and trees, although... There is a guiding path. No way. And we're right back on that familiar beach where we started. This whole thing really did feel like the stream of consciousness of a dream. Starts off in one place, and the next thing you know, you're entirely invested in a completely different mindset. And the transition may have been smooth, but you can't even remember where that transition occurred exactly. You just accept everything uncritically, because you have nothing but the current moment. I started off enjoying what felt like a cozy dream vacation. I got a little spooked by the door in the basement. I entered and found myself lost in an endless maze of giant tunnels. I entered a larger but more linear tunnel that, oddly enough, put me at ease. I explored with curiosity until I found myself in a, a large, empty, but pristine hotel. And only once the rain and the thunder started did it start to take a darker turn. What appeared to be an asylum hallway in what moments ago was a hotel. The rain becoming deafeningly loud as I crossed the catwalk. And only in that moment, realizing that I'm being watched by someone who I can never quite catch a glimpse of, even in spite of their remaining stationary. And of course, I never did find them, because in dreams, you can never quite reach your goal. But this was really cool, and even in spite of the name, it is nothing like its predecessor. It's going for entirely different moods, entirely different architecture, and it is super cool. But I think, uh, for tonight, my only dilemma left is whether I'll retire to the comfy bedroom in the attic? Or the comfy bedroom overlooking the sea. Either way, if you like this video... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. We're not leaving this without doing a no-clip run. No stinking way, Jose. It just looks so cool up on the cliff like that. The lights inside giving it a nice fishbowl effect where from the outside you can see how open it is. I mean, that would actually probably creep me out in context, but you get the idea. Uh, let's go through the mountain and see... Wow. Oh man, that ballroom alone is like a quarter of the entire map. It all feels so huge and endless when you're in it, but once you actually get an idea for where you're going, you start to see how distinct every area is and how self-contained they actually are. There's that... I believe back stairwell. <laughs> wow, we can't see the stairs, but we can see the railings just floating, almost as if there's some kind of jumbled ladder that it expects you to climb. I mean, what can I say? It's creepy and comfy. All those things, uh, an unnoticeable transition between the two, and different people will draw the line in different places. In other words, it's pretty much everything I love in a map. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this map out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. 
And as always, I will see you in the next one. Also, I've just realized how cool this is. As you're walking away from the party, the music fades out, the sound of the thunder fades in, and suddenly you go through that one door that's far darker than the rest of the place.